Hello the world, I'm the Talking Mausoleum and today I want to share with you my top 6 tips, tricks and tactics to improve your play in the new PvP modes that opened up with the Colosseums and Elden Ring. So you can see that grey iron badge turn gold in no time. And to be even more concrete we're gonna talk about the modes Combat Ordeal and United Combat in specific where you face off against multiple opponents either on your own or as part of a team. Of course you can also do duels in these arenas and we'll talk more about duels on this channel hopefully in the not so distant future, but duels have been around for a long time now, while these multiplayer modes are pretty fresh additions to Elden Ring's PvP. So I figured maybe some of you aren't as used to their specific challenges yet. So if you dig this kind of PvP content consider subscribing, I had a couple of slow weeks recently but usually put out Elden Ring PvP content on a regular basis here. Obviously, as has often been said, you can get good and win with any build and strategy you like, so if you are already G9 levels of proficient in Elden Ring PvP, this list will probably still be interesting to you, but won't necessarily include like a big revelation that will change your whole playstyle or anything. As such, this video is meant more for people who might either be newer to Souls PvP in general, maybe you just tried it out now with this new update, or maybe you already did a lot of duels but struggle somewhat to adjust to these new modes where you have to fight multiple opponents at once. Alright, so let's jump into it with tip number one. So the first thing to do in order to improve in both combat ordeals as well as team combats is more of a mindset thing. What I mean when I say don't duel is, don't waste a lot of time fighting one person in a one-on-one -on -one duel type of setting during these battles. Who is declared the winner at the end of the 5 minutes you get in these fights is determined by who gets the most kills, while also being killed the least themselves of course. Spending like a minute just fighting one guy, where you're both around the same level of skill, dodging each other's attacks and maybe getting hit in here and there, really that's a waste of time. Because while you're fighting it out, the other players will regain kills in the background and you'll fall behind. Also, oftentimes, even if your little duel is nearing its end as one of you is getting low on HP, there's still the possibility for another player to just come in with a well placed jump attack and steal the kill from you anyway. It's of course really easy to get stuck in a one on one situation like that if you go to attack someone but they dodge your attempt and now are focused on you. You can't very well just turn around and go for someone else now can you, because you'll get slapped on the ass. So I'm not saying only ever attack players who are not yet facing you, but if you recognize a situation where you're fighting an opponent who you don't seem to be able to outplay in like the next 30 seconds or so, one thing you can do is to just run away, at which point they'll probably run after you so then you can lead them over to where the other guys are fighting. With all the commotion going on there, it's pretty likely that your opponent will have to avoid someone else's attack, which will get him off your back and maybe he'll even get so distracted that you're able to more easily finish him off then. This may not be the most honorable way to fight, but it sure is effective. The situation might be a little different for when you're fighting in a united combat team of two against two opponents, because there there'll often be two pseudo duel situations emerging in the arena where you fight one guy while your teammate handles the other. But if you can coordinate your team accordingly, it will often be more effective to go hard after one guy together first and then try and kill the second opponent quickly as well before his buddy can really respawn and join back in. In a way this next point is directly linked to what we were just talking about. Of course, in the United Combats, where you fight as part of a team of two or three players, it seems obvious to help out your teammates if they're in a tight spot. Like, if you see your buddy getting ganked by two of your opponents and you have the ability to swoop in with a quick spell or R1 to take the heat off them for a moment, definitely do that. Oh, and also, if you're using spell buffs that can benefit your allies as well, try and use them in their vicinity wherever possible. But helping other players can also be a good idea in the free-for-all battle or deals. So, say you notice a duel type situation like we just talked about in the previous entry, and one player is getting close to dying and starts panic rolling away. Maybe consider going in and hitting the dominant player for some big damage, maybe you can even kill him outright there, because the next thing you can do is go after the other player who was just struggling and is probably still low on health and get another easy kill. Again, we're not trying to be decent human beings here, we're trying to win. Our next tip can also make the play we were just talking about a lot easier, the usage of spells. 
Now, this is of course not to be understood as a 100% of the time you definitely have to always use spells kind of thing. But more than in duels or even in invasions, I feel that builds who have the ability to utilize some spells can benefit greatly from the extra options in these arena modes. Of course, there are a ton of other viable builds that center more around quick high damaging attacks like colossal crouch pokes, dual wielded spears or curved swords for example. But going back to the scenario we talked about in our last entry, if you have the ability to just throw a giant fireball over to those two guys fighting among themselves, you don't even have to make your way over to them in the first place. And since they probably won't see it coming, you might just grill two birds with one big flaming stone. Of course this also works great for helping your teammates out in the united combats, since there's no friendly fire to be worried about, so you can just fire away at your heart's content. Everything that has high damage and a large hitbox works very well for this. Sorceress can use the Cannon of Hyma for example, and for incantations there's stuff like Giant Flame Take Thee or Lanciax's Glaive to just name a few. There are also a number of Ashes of War that work really well for that, like the Taker's Flames from the Blasphemous Blade or everyone's favorite Wave of Gold from the Sacred Relic Sword. Now this entry concerns itself with what you can do to avoid someone else doing what we were just talking about so far to you instead. And the big thing, hence the title card, is not locking on. Or rather only locking on in very specific situations. This is something that especially a lot of you who may be less experienced in Souls PvP will have to get used to a bit first. But at the end of the day locking onto an opponent will have the camera center on that opponent with no ability to quickly turn it around to see what's going on behind you. With up to 6 players fighting at the same time, especially in the modes with Spirit Ashes enabled, this is a guarantee for getting blindsided by one of those big AoE spells we talked about or someone coming in for a backstab. Rather, you wanna play unlocked for most of the fight, only locking on to either target a specific foe with a spell of your own, or when you're trying to finish someone off and are using a weapon with a narrow hitbox like spears, halberds or thrusting swords for example. If your weapon has a moveset with more wider swings like straight swords or hammers, you can just aim your attacks in the general direction of the player you want to hit and still have the ability to do a quick turnaround to catch another opponent off guard who tries to sneak in from behind. So this next one is a little different, but something I noticed a lot of people doing in these multiplayer arena modes is make a build that is centered solely around doing the most damage possible. Often they'll also use one of the big AoE explosion spells we were talking about, but stuff like the Bolt of Grand Sex's Ash of War or just some quick weapons with a lot of bleed buildup also seem to be pretty popular here. Now at first glance this might seem like a pretty effective strategy, and it is, but in the more extreme cases these players kept their vigor so low in order to maximize their damage output that sometimes even a single hit will kill them. The thought here obviously is that they don't care because they want to one shot as many people as possible getting their kill count nice and high. The problem with this approach is that once I notice that someone is doing this while also being as squishy as a stress ball, I will make it a high priority to go after them heavily for the rest of the fight. And I would suspect a lot of other people will do this too. And that's not something that comes from getting salty over being one shot, although that probably plays a role too, but it's just the smartest thing to do because someone with such a small HP pool is the easiest target to get a quick kill from. Where I would have to put in some real skill to kill a player that can tank a couple of hits, here I only have to get lucky with my attack once and that's another point to my elimination counter. So while doing a build with high damage potential is certainly enticing, never underestimate the importance of good defenses in these arena battle modes. Because you will get hit and you don't want to put a giant come after me I'm easy to kill sign on your back. Because that will quickly make you public enemy number one of the other three to five guys in the arena. However, I should point out that in the United Combat team fights, something like a glass cannon build can become a little more viable, especially if you can communicate what you're doing to your teammates, so they might be able to keep your opponents away from you. And for our last entry, this again kinda goes hand in hand with what we were just saying. Because not only should you not underlevel your Wigger in the first place, but also don't miss out on the advantage that buffing your character gives you. 
I definitely am guilty of this myself because I don't really like having to spend time applying buffs where I could have fun fighting instead, but with how easy it is to get in the middle of a blender in these modes and die instantly, you should make use of every possible help the game gives you. For one, there are the classic spell-based body buffs like Sacred Vow or Flame Grant Me Strength that also function as a damage buff, but in this case I'll use them more for the increased defenses. Bestial Vitality is also a great spell to use every time after respawning for its passive HP regen. Using something like the Opaline Heart here in your Wondrous Physic to up your defenses even more also might be a wiser choice than using a damage buffing crystal tier instead. And I also highly recommend the Uplifting Aromatic that you can take 10 of into the fight and that essentially function as another healing flask since they'll negate most damage of the next hit. And most of the things you can get hit with in Elden Ring still do enough damage to basically equal one sip from your Crimson Flask. So those were 6 tips, tricks or tactics that will hopefully help you improve your play in the combat ordeal and united combat modes of Elden Ring's Colosseums. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel because we do Elden Ring PvP content regularly here and also check out my other videos like my PvP guide series if you're looking for even more PvP infotainment. Wow, I never thought I'd use that word. I'm sorry, I'll see myself out now. Anyway, thank you all for watching, have a wonderful day and see you all on the battlefield!